Welcome back to Let's Play the Beginner's Guide. I'm Burning Dog Face, and we're checking out The Streetwise Fool, some kind of bar or coffee shop. Designed by uh, Coda, of course. A lot of staircases in these works, I notice. It's weird to look behind a building for meaning rather than, uh, like, hidden collectibles. Interesting that with such a minimalist design, he still makes the, uh, the handicapped bathroom. And that was through the door I saw outside. This isn't the greatest place to put a uh, staircase. Oh, okay. Abstract. For the world is hollow and I have touched the sky. Oh, crap. It's good! I live. I guess he didn't program in uh, falling damage. Or maybe it just uh, he didn't program in a death condition. Well, let's find out. Oh, it's a giant cone. Or a funnel. Oh, I see. It's the opposite of what I thought. I thought this is the entrance and everything else is blocked off. And no, these are just the walls. It's kind of hard when I can't indicate anything at all. Except by directly facing it, which isn't very precise. What's this? Nothing. I can't get in there. I guess it's just a light source. Okay, this is happening. Can we block one behind me? No. Oh, I see, yeah, okay, let's just get in here like we're cattle or something, huh? Thanks. I'll just uh, hang out here forever, I guess. Oh, okay, that was not expected. What happens if I just... I can't fuck off. I cannot leave this black square in that direction anyway. This prison, funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. Thank you, Davey. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. Are you going to make me play through them all? Because uh, I feel like an hour and a half might have been an underestimate, if that's the case. We're going to go down the stairs and wind up back at the coffee shop. Is that it? I'm trying to understand, trying to get on the wavelength. But this is all so weirdly abstract and surreal that, uh difficulty dealing with it. Three dots. This is not the coffee shop, but it's, it's nice. Just 
lie down right here and look up at the clouds. I don't know. It's a nice trench, I guess. It's the puzzle again, with the exact same solution as the last time. And the mist and everything. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. You close off everything in your life before this moment in order to open the way forward. That feels very uh, meaningful. By the way, when Ronan Drake gifted me this game, he said he was looking forward to my interpretations. And that's not a word I hear very often in relation to video games. Interpretations. Usually, like myself, video games are pretty literal. Here is a series of events, here is exactly what happens or can happen if there are, like, decisions or anything. And you can all just lay it out very cleanly and dryly in an encyclopedia fashion. Interpretations suggest something entirely different. Or, you know, things where there is no right answer or no one thing to declare. I doubt very much that, uh... Well, I say that, but there, someone might have actually created a, like, Davy Readin... Uh, wiki. Pardon me. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure I was pronouncing his name right. You know, since there was an example and everything. Oh. Here, Coda begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the buttons on your gamepad to respond. Well then... But... I haven't told them anything. Yes, it's full of mist. I just keep pressing X, man. Okay. All right. If I had to describe the way my brain is working right now, I would say that it's the exact opposite of how it goes when I'm playing games like Jazz Punk, where it's so weird that I just uh, turn my brain off and go with it. And so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. I'm trying to understand everything about this uh, level. Just drinking, you know, does the concrete uh, texture pattern have any uh, meaning? There's an always a sense of isolation in these, and I do get a distinct feeling of loneliness. And if, uh... It's a lamppost. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. Well, it's on the title screen. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. 
He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. This game is connected to the internet. I wonder if that's true. I wonder if that's true. That's a bit of a convenient spot for a note. Nice room, not. Let me guess they're all uh, insults. I think that's where that would so be going. first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the internet. Oh. All of the notes that you're going to see have been written by Coda. This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So right away I was like, I have to be friends with this person. In retrospect, I think I was probably a bit too pushy trying to get his attention. Uh, I was over-enthusiastic. But he was very gracious about it and very patient with me. And I cooled off eventually. Holy shit. Oh, I see there's no way to get over there and uh, interact with those. Ah! <laughs> That's amazing. Well played. Well played! I cannot. Hi. Oh, feel free to skip over any of these notes if they're not doing anything for you. Nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them. I'm going to read all of them. Either hey! Way, to me, they convey a sense of loneliness. I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. But it's ironic, isn't it? That in playing this game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. And I have to be honest with you, this idea is really seductive to me. That I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing. I could just get to know you through your work. I think this is why I always liked Coda's games so much, is because it felt like they let me have that connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely too. I like that. Oh god. Um okay. You see the non-standard characters that show up as cubes are a really nice touch. I said cubes, I meant squares. <laughs> Indeed. What guy spelled much wrong, anyway? Back here. Uh, I guess I'd walk off and try to get to these other ones. Um. Oh, I can't walk off here. Fine. 
Oh, I see now. It loops over there. I don't know why, but looking at that section of wall specifically reminds me of the, uh, command center from the original Power Rangers when I was a kid. I totally missed this whole thing over here. Okay. I choose to believe. But ass but. All of these are left by Coda? I mean, this one depends. It's very crowded compared to when I go for a walk at 11 p.m. at night and no one is on the streets. But it's not very crowded at all compared to a Japanese subway car. I thought that one said. I think that's everyone, friend. Liar! I saw that! I don't know what to make of any of this. I have been wondering about that. It's made of circles. I feel like it should have been mentioned what the theme of the game jam was. Like, is it one of those just make whatever in 24 hours game jams, or was it make a game in a week in the theme of deception kind of game, ga game jams? I would have been very embarrassed if I fell off there and ended the level early. Well, once again, I'm going to call it. I'm Burning Dog Face, and this has been Let's Play the Beginner's Guide 
I'll see you next time when our journey continues, and I uh, try to wrap my head around more of the method to Coda's madness. Hopefully not literally. Later.